Today, we've got a gel fill with a full color change with gel polish, plus we're adding in a glitter press and we're gonna show you all of it in real time. All right, Trace, so um, today we're doing a gel fill. Um, walk us through the customer here, exactly what's the situation. She's coming back after two weeks. Um, what kind of fill are you gonna be doing? We're just gonna do a basic, regular fill. She's, she's slightly grown out, usually about two to three weeks for a client. Um, so we just need to add a little bit to the back. We're gonna shorten a little bit. We're gonna do some gel polish and a glitter press on a couple of them and call it a day. Nice, and in the salon, how much time would you book for this service? 30 minutes. 30 minutes. I am very excited to watch this as I do so am I. <laughs> <laughs> every episode of Real Time because uh, we're going to put the pressure on. Are you ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, let's start by pushing back our cuticles. This is my opportunity to really kind of look at things. Is there anything broken? Is there anything lifted uh, that I'm gonna have to fix? Like she broke a little corner off, but we're gonna shorten, so I'm not too worried about that. Just gonna go through real quick. Now we don't wanna overthink this part. I see people take forever doing this. It's just my time to really actually just check out her nails. Okay, once we do that, we're going to pull out our crosscut and we're going to prep her natural nails. So let's go ahead and get tucked back in there. So I pulled out a new bit. I really just like having new bits all the time. So even doing the amount of nails that I do, I'm replacing these probably probably every two weeks. I'm gonna shorten her a little bit. And then a little bit of lift in there. Just take care of it real quick. Always want to just get rid of it. Don't pry it. Don't try to glue it. Just remove it. Make sure it's completely gone. Coming in. Now Steph is kind of wearing a combination of, what do you got Steph? You got all kinds of things going on here. Yeah. We got acrylic, we got gel yeah. captain acrylic. Uh, what else we got? That's pretty mm. much it. Yeah. So, um, and we're gonna fill her with gel, which is not a problem. I think a lot of people are afraid to do that and it works just fine. It's not a problem. Everything can mix. The only time that I would say that you can run into an issue, I don't know if Steph would agree, is if you're trying to fill acrylic over gel. Usually I'll take most of it down if I'm doing it the opposite way. Again, I'm not really worried about removing all the shine because I'm not worried. If it sticks up there, there's enough product. We have enough strength, so we don't have to overthink it. Okay. Turn. There we go. Put it in there. So what's the topic for conversation today, Seth? Um, I feel like what's like the benefit of filling with gel rather than starting a full set? Well, I think we were actually talking about this earlier, right? Is if someone's not too comfortable with gel and they're wanting to get into it, they could always start off by doing acrylic and start filling with gel. Mm -hmm. Or let's say that somebody has ski slope nails, broke, uh, bitten nails, something that really should require that full set to be with, um, the acrylic, mm -hmm. then they can start filling with gel. Some people come in and they have their mind set, like I want gel nails, but their nails are telling you, please do not put gel on me because it's not gonna work. Mm -hmm. But if they desperately wanna have gel, you can eventually work them into it. It's not a problem. 
I don't know if that's your experience, but that's my experience. Yeah. Trace, that's a medium crosscut. Mm -hmm. So you can, you're shortening with that bit? Yeah, because I'm being lazy. <laughs> <laughs> and you well, can, I didn't realize it can actually... Oh yeah, it's got, a, it's got a, you put enough pressure behind it, it has a, a good amount of oomph. So let's swipe you. If I was taking down a ton of length, I would have probably pulled out something a little more coarse. Just doing a very, very slight shortening. Yeah, kind of get them down a little bit, and then we'll do some, you know, the refining and shaping with a file to really get them all even. Okay, let's do this. Get rid of that. Pull our protein bond out. And go through it. So we're just really focusing on that natural now that's exposed. I know a lot of people were kind of asking Steph because Stephanie actually reads a lot or everybody's a lot. <laughs> she reads everybody's posts on uh, YouTube. Um, and you were saying that a lot of people are like, what if they have a lot of cuticle? Mm -hmm. Usually the, uh, that bit that I was just using will take care of it just fine. And then once you've been doing clients, you really don't have a cuticle problem because you're maintaining them every two to three weeks. Right. So we're going through, do our second coat. Yeah, all the way through. How much gel did you do in salon? Yeah. Um, towards the end, I was probably about 50-50. Um, with my enhancements, like some would be acrylic and then some would be hard gel. Most of the designs were in my gel polish, just because I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great way of doing it, like yeah. surface work. Yeah. We got the base, just kind of put a nice thin bead back there, pull it out. Use the remnants. And we're just really concentrating on that back area and I'm just smoothing it out over the rest. Now, some people ask if they can skip base. I know people that do. Um, I really just don't recommend it. I, I just like, if I can do something that I know is gonna add that added um, reassurance that I'm not gonna get any lifting, I'm always gonna do it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and light. Perfect. I don't know about you, but I'm just like, this really is like the foundation to gel. Mm -hmm. And it's just gonna lock everything in and you're not gonna have to worry about it. Yeah, like when you say the same about two coats of protein bond, mm -hmm. I'd just rather not find out later on that you're gonna lift. Oh, I should have used two. Like, yeah. I'll just take an extra second and just do two. Yeah, cause usually if you're booked, finding out later on that there was lifting or a problem, you don't usually have time to work that into your schedule. No, not at all. So concealer pink. There's brush hair in there. We'll go around that. <laughs> Again, just a little bit because we're just filling that back area. Back there, kind of pillow it back. Lightly pull it out. Do you like gel or acrylic better? I like both. I like giving the customer what they need. So if they need acrylic, I'm gonna do it. But I will say that it used to be, if someone came in and said just do whatever and their nails could really have both mm -hmm. or any of it, I would normally do acrylic, mm -hmm. but I've kind of steered away from that. I really kind of like love working with gel. It files so easy. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, it depends what mood I'm in. I had the exact same experience. And I hated gel when I first met it. And then once I started working with it more and more and started getting a little more comfortable with it, then I started kind of favoriting it. Go ahead. I'm going to go in a minute on that one. Now with you, I'm not turning on the lights half power because our lights actually um, have a half power feature. Mm -hmm. But since you have stuff on your nail plate already, I really don't have to worry about that heat spike like if it was a fresh set which I know you know, but just explaining to everybody else. So if mm -hmm. this was a new set, most of the time I'm gonna put it on that half power setting mm -hmm. and let it set up a little bit. So when gel cures, it's curing kind of top to bottom, bottom to top, inside out, outside in, and you can sometimes feel that mm -hmm. on your nail body. So if you do the 50 or 50% 50 half power, 
then you don't have to worry about it. It just slows the process down, lets it set up a little bit, and then you're good to go. Okay, next. So when did you finally learn gel? When you guys told me to. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I finally took, started taking gel classes, I, I came home one day and my husband's like, how did they go at the shop? Because I was just building. Mm -hmm. And he's, I'm like, well, I could have done this full set, but it was gel. And he's like, go take gel classes. I never want to hear you say that again. <laughs> I did. I'm, oh, man. When I first learned gel, <laughs> oh, it was back in the day where it was all one consistency. Mm -hmm. It's like, just deal with it. It was all like honey. <laughs> nightmare. Nightmare to use. Okay, let's go ahead and actually I'm going to just go ahead and use that medium bit again because gel is so easy to file. I think I'm just going to use this. And I can't find my other bit, so we're improvising. But that is really the one thing I really love about gel. Is it just, it's just like butter. Yeah. Sorry, B. So it was just a one minute cure on that. Taking that medium bit, I'm really just making sure that everything's nice and smooth all the way through. Making sure it's nice and flush in the nail bed. I think sometimes people overthink the cuticle area. We don't need a lot of product back there, so we don't need to thicken it up. And what will happen is we'll put a ton of product back there and we'll start filing it. And the more you file and the more you put pressure on something, it can lift. So I used to do that. I used to put a ton of product back there and I'd file and file and file and I'm like, they already have lifting <laughs> before they even went out of my chair. And it was because I caused it myself. Swipe these, get that sticky layer off. I don't know about you, but the one thing I couldn't handle about gel. Sticky but I've, I've learned to deal with mm -hmm. it, or work around it actually. Now I know what I'm doing. I used to just be covered in it, yeah. it was awful. I used to keep a <clears throat> um, little nail wipe with a bunch of swipe like sitting right in front of me yeah. when I was working so I could wipe everything. Clean yourself off. Mm -hmm. I feel like when people are fresh out of school, they can learn both acrylic and gel fairly easily. Yeah. But when you are like a hardcore acrylic person, transitioning is kind of difficult. It was hard for me because I'm very heavy handed. Mm -hmm. I do not have a light touch. There is no soft side to me. <laughs> uh, and it was hard. It was very hard to do. Um, and I have been doing acrylic for probably a good six months. So then it was this obsession. Yeah. Especially hard for me. And I would file through it a lot. And I remember uh, Greg would show me pink and white gel. And I'm like, okay, I got it, I got it. And then I'd go back and I would file through it every time. And it wasn't until he actually did one on me that I realized his touch was a lot lighter. It looked yeah. like he was filing the same amount, but the touch was way lighter. Okay. Let's shape you. That, whatever that was. Smaller. A little extra piece. Mm -hmm. Hanging out, sticking around. So how long have you been doing nails before you learned? Probably like three years or something. Oh, so yeah. And I'm you the definitely same. definitely were set in your yeah, ways. And I'm the same. I'm very heavy handed. Um, I like to be in control, so I like to be able to put the acrylic where I wanted it. So with gel having to be so like delicate and kind of let it flow, mm -hmm. it was really hard to wrap my brain around. Take this one a little bit more. But I was told in order to be a young nails mentor, you had to be proficient in all the things. All aspects, most definitely. 
Okay. Shake it. I think it's good to know all the things though, because then you don't have to tell anyone now. And Absolutely. You don't, you don't always like turn away money, you know? I, exactly. Just learn it all. And then you'll never have to say, I don't do that. Um, and a lot of salons, like some spas or like the salon suite settings, mm -hmm. they don't want the um, smell of mm -hmm. acrylic. So gel is just a nice alternative. Yeah. And I mean, that kind of is because I'll talk about, um, you know, knowing both and being able to do both. But some people are like, I can't. It's not allowed. And your allergies. Yeah, I understand that. You can't, you can't. But if you can, and especially if you're trying to build a clientele, don't box yourself in with just one thing. this length on you. A little shorter, a little more active. Mm. <laughs> do you prefer them really long or? Yeah. You do? I've been getting used to all the variations lately though, so. Different shapes. Yeah, whatever. Different length. You have been a, a trooper. <laughs> and I've been able to wear mine short. Which I know um, Habib's not a fan of, but. <laughs> okay. Shape you. I'm sorry. that people have been wondering? Um, I feel like some of the comments from this will be that there wasn't that much outgrowth, but this is just a basic fill, you know? Yep. Like, there is definitely a difference between a basic fill and a fill and a rebalance, or... And we'll get there, right? Yeah. Like, smile lines. Mm -hmm. we're, we're gonna show you guys everything. So, I mean, maintenance is key. We wanna show you how to maintain everything yeah and this is a return client you know two weeks so we're just dusting her off getting her nice and clean again i don't have them go wash i don't want her disappearing on me Let's who knows what i could get into yeah <laughs> usually it's they're talking to somebody and I'm just like sitting there going oh my gosh please just come back to my chair <laughs> I want to finish your nails okay let's coach you with our protein bond that way we know we don't get any chipping I really liked this turquoise I thought that was pretty yeah I noticed someone was asking on um, the uh, page they were asking well couldn't you have just painted the smile line mm -hmm. you could mm -hmm. um, they were like it seems like it would take longer and really for me I like the, the look of a cut in smile line and it doesn't take too long for me so but either way whatever works for you I'm like the other thing too is is it taking long because your whole set was 45 minutes right. so I don't think it's added it's in, in the business um, sense, it's just right. Yeah. Because you're doing that in what you should be doing. We've got a Furby. I got to get out of there. Oh, it's embedded in there. It's going to cost. So we're just clipping it. Get out. I can't really see it. There it is. Yeah, it, it really, I mean, if you think of it in the big picture, like 45 minutes is, is nothing, right? Or 48, was it 48? Yeah. Yeah, 40 minutes, that's a thing. I mean, painting it in, let's say it saves you five, you're still booking on the hour. Unless it's gonna get you to 30, it doesn't really matter. 
You yeah. know what I mean? Well, and I think it depends who you are, because personally, I can't hand paint to save my life. Right, that's the other thing. <laughs> right. And so that's going to be a problem, right? Yeah. I don't want to have to do that. You'd probably have to think more about painting the straight line. Yeah. And just cutting. And like, uh, yeah, that would cost me a lot of time. It's going to be a hard pass for me. <laughs> But I think that's what people don't understand is like, I'm very much like whatever works for you. Right. If, if, um, painting it in as fast for you, whatever's the fastest, whenever you are at work going as fast as possible with making sure that your client is taken care of and they're happy, then you're doing good. These are just techniques that I do and help me and have helped others. Really would love to have found that um, orange wood stick. Orange wood stick. There we go. Gel brushes work great too. <laughs> Double check it. Okie dokie. And the light. It's okay, Habib. You're good. Am I in the way? I think all of our stomachs are like yeah. going at it today. Communicating. They're like not happy. They're like, you put too much coffee in me. You can tell <laughs> I definitely had too much coffee. I'm shaking. I shake as it is. So coffee just makes it. And we went through Starbucks. Like, give me the biggest coffee you have before we do this. <laughs> Cause that's smart. Steph, are you a pink girl? Mm, no. I think I've asked this before. You know what? <laughs> For someone that's not into pink, I have been doing a lot of pink. I and I have been that. buying pink. And I'm a little worried about myself, I know, actually. Something's going on. Yeah. Shane keeps pointing it out, too. I know. Well, she loves pink. So. <laughs> She's like, Tracy says she doesn't like it, but I think she does. She definitely does. She definitely does. I think the older I get, I'm getting more into it. I don't know. I'm such a tomboy. I always felt like I couldn't like pink when I was younger, so I just told myself. I just told myself I didn't. I, like I actually it. love this magenta. It's one of my favorite colors in the collection, and it's like one of the oldest. <laughs> it's been around it forever. It's been around for a while. And I still love it. It's a really nice color. Mm -hmm. I always liked this one. I'm going to go ahead and coat you twice because I'm not sure which ones I'm going to glitter press and which ones I'm not, or I may just do them all. Okay. But we're going to put another coat on and hit those tips. Okay. Stomachs. You're going to be able to hear our stomachs in the video. <laughs> so I see you capping the fronts, Trace. The only reason I'm capping, because you don't have to with a uh, manicure, which is, I love, um, is because she does have like that glitter blue. And oh, I just so want you it, want it to be consistent. I just, yeah, yeah, I want it to be consistent. Makes sense. So we'll just cap that and call it a day. Let's see, go ahead. Next. Two lights when you're doing gel. Oh, it's pretty clutch too. So important. I mean, I understand it when you're first starting if you can't, but um, I really believe in it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's key. Mm -hmm. I mean, like just even for client comfort, so they're yeah. not crossing over. Yeah. Well, and it really puts you in a, a weird position when they mm -hmm. do cross over. Mm -hmm. So. It's just not um, something you want to do on a regular basis if you don't have to. But again, when you're first starting, if you can only get one light, we always make it work. Okay, go ahead. Is my head in the way? Have you, I'm like, I feel like my hair has been in the way half of the time. Okay, let's press. Let's decide what we're doing. 
this one let's do a full And that's key, right? Going from nail to jar, nail to oh, jar. Oh, so important because yeah. otherwise your brush gets really sticky and you won't get as good of coverage. So this way you know. This one, let's see. Let's do just kind of a, eh, I think I want to do the full. Yeah, <laughs> I think good. we're just going to do a glitter press all the way through. Good. Looks great. Yeah. We haven't done that yet. Everybody loves glitter, you know? Yeah, I'm like, I'm really loving this glitter color, so we might as well do it all the way through. It matches my ring. Okay. All the way through. going to top, top coat her and then we'll put another layer of glitter on so these puppies bling. So I'm using stain resistant because it has the tacky layer. You can also use manicure top, either one. But I want something that has a sticky layer because I want to be able to do my glitter press twice. And the light man and go all the way through so I think this mix I should know because I mixed it earlier today <laughs> is fuchsia pinky and diamond, uh, not diamond dust crushed pearl and for everybody that's flipping out on how much glitter is on the table believe me I'm gonna charge her for this glitter so I'm not worried about that I'm wasting a little bit of it make more. Okay. What are we doing on time, Habib? Good. 26. All right. If you haven't used stain resistant for glitter press, the sticky layer in stain resistant is incredible. I love it. All the way through, pop it on there, brush it down. Oh yeah, you're bleeding. <laughs> I like it. Who doesn't love glitter? Exactly. And glitter in the most random places. Okay. Yep. Top. Sorry. <laughs> Dust myself off. Don't use your most expensive Mac brush to do this. Use a cheap, cheap dollar store brush. It's more than efficient. In fact, I don't like my brushes too fluffy. I don't know about you, Steph. Mm -mm. I like them to have a little bit of um, grit to them. Yeah, I used whatever like junk brush was laying around.
in the light, man. Go and pull out your other hand. Sorry, get rid of that. Thank you, hubby. Mm -hmm. He's the salon helper today. <laughs> Wouldn't that be lovely? Okay, this is kind of more on the purple tone. I like it. So, you know, not full pink. Right. We got purple. I like it. And come and pull out your other hand. Just like that, new woman. Very nice. And she can go rinse her hands after she pays me and she heads out the door. <laughs> On my own time. On your own time. All done. Yeah. 29.44. Glittery. I'm mm -hmm. not even gonna charge you for the hand glitter. <laughs> Great set of nails, phenomenal time. Remember, the whole point of this is to show you what Tracy's doing in real life environment, salon environment, so you can improve your salon skills. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll see you next week on Real Time.